Hello and welcome to this holiday theme tutorial from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today, as you can see from the picture that I have up on my screen, we're going to be making a gift wrapped box or generally referred to as a present. So basically, it's going to actually be pretty simple. Uh, we've just got the, the box here that's constructed out of a cube pretty quickly and then we've got some ribbons. We're going to toss in some nice reflections in here. We'll do some environment settings to get these nice reflections on the ribbons and then of course doing things like the tag and such. And so this is going to be an all-in-one tutorial. Uh, we're not going to do any multiple parts and so we'll be covering some modeling, some materials, uh, some basic texturing, some lighting, all of that. So let's just jump into Blender and get started. So I have here just the default scene. Uh, you know, which is my default cube, camera, and lamp. And what I want to first do is to go ahead and set up the basic environment so I can start getting a feel for how my scene is going to look. So what I want to do is I want to do, I want to move the, the cube up such that it's positioned directly above or directly on the ground plane. And then we're actually going to go in and add a ground plane. So let's just hit G, Z, and 1 with the cube selected. So that'll uh, activate grab mode, move it up along the Z axis, one blender unit, such that the bottom of the, the cube is directly along the, the central axis. If I now switch into top view, I can hit Shift-A, add in a mesh and a plane. On this plane, I'm immediately going to hit Tab to go into edit mode, and let's just hit S and 20 uh, on our number pad, and then hit Enter. So that will just scale it up 20 times, giving us a nice size for the ground plane, such that we can you know, basically create the, the background without seeing any of the world around it. Well, from our camera, let's go ahead and set up the camera now, which we're going to render this out at our usual uh, 848 by 348 at 100% for the size of our, our Blender Cookie banner. And then we're going to go ahead and reposition the camera, just something about like this. So I've just selected the camera, and then from camera view, which is zero, I'm just going to move it around uh, something kind of like this. Maybe I'll rotate it. If I hit period to rotate around the cursor, I can hit R and then double tap X to bring it down a little bit. Then I'll maybe hit G and then middle click to bring it in along the normal or just basically scale it in. Uh, I can kind of, if I double tap R, I can go into trackball rotation and just get something that's maybe a little bit more interesting. Maybe something about like that. Maybe rotate just a little bit. Okay, so just something a little more interesting. And then let's just, before we do anything, let's just hit F12 to render it to see what we've got. And we can see that we have a pretty boring box on a flat plane. So what I want to do now is let's go ahead and set up our lighting. So the lighting that we're going to use is we're going to use a three point lighting setup such that we'll have two fill lights and one key light. And we're going to use area lights for this because this area lights allow us to get very nice kind of even but soft lighting to get some nice illumination. So on our lamp here, let's go ahead and first I'll hit comma to reset the rotation around the bounding box center. Let's go over to the lamp settings and first let's just change it over to an area lamp. On this area lamp, uh, what I want to do is let's first just move this over. Uh, well, let's actually just rotate this around like this and we'll maybe position it just a little bit to the left of the camera. Uh, about like that. So just kind of rotating around. Uh, that looks pretty good. Well, let's render it and you can immediately see that our scene is very, very blown out. So with area lights, since it's just even illumination, what I want to do is rather than changing the energy, let's just turn down the distance which with that with which that energy is affected such that uh, basically we have full energy up to this point and then it starts fading out. So if we set this point to say five, then we'll have full energy and then it starts fading out. And now if we render it, you can see that's very similar to what we're getting. So it's much, much softer and similar to what we want. Well, we'll go ahead and hit escape. And with the key light, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it like that because it gets, it's what's going to give me my nice highlights and such. But now I'm going to go ahead and hit shift D right click and let's hit period to rotate around the cursor again and we'll rotate this around and this will be our first fill light which from the front view I'm also going to rotate it down around the side just a little bit maybe move it up a bit more just so it's kind of filling in from the side and then what we're going to do such that the light isn't quite as concentrated in one spot we're going to go ahead and go down to the area shape and under the size let's turn the size up to a full 20. And this will get very soft illumination. So we can see that we're getting this nice, soft lighting in here. But let's go ahead and turn off the shadows on here. We really don't want those. And we don't want the specular highlights. We want this just to kind of fill in some of the dark spots. 
So there you can kind of see what we're getting. And we might even go ahead and turn the, the distance down to say 2.5, just to tone it down a little bit more. We don't want to blow out the highlights. You know, we still want our key light to be the main light source, but then this will just even it out. Now let's go ahead and hit Shift D and we'll rotate this around to the other side so that we have lighting coming in. First we have our key light and then filling in from the left and the right, giving us nice even illumination. And if we just render this now, we can kind of see exactly that looks pretty good. But it's also very bland right now. So let's go ahead and warm up the scene or kind of warm up and cool down the scene. So what we're going to do from the I'm going to rotate this around just a little bit more. I'm going to take the right side and I'm going to give it a nice uh, cool glow. So as this is fading into the background, it gets a little cooler. And so I'm going to set this to just a subtle blue about like that. And then let's grab the other one and we're going to give it a subtle orange about like that. And if we render that, you'll see it looks it's a little bit nicer. Uh, we might go ahead and give this a little bit more blue, maybe something in there. There we go. Uh, that's maybe a little too much. We want it to be pretty subtle. OK, that looks pretty good. So it's just very subtle, but it does really help with the overall effect. Maybe I'll give this a little bit more orange. Try that. There we go. Now that's looking good. OK. And now what we'll do is let's go ahead and set up our uh, our environment. So on the the world, we're just going to enable our ambient occlusion, we're going to go ahead and set this down to about 2 point or 0.25. If we render that, then we can kind of see what we're getting. And we're going to go ahead and leave it at the add. Uh, and then we'll enable environment lighting also at 0.25 and render that. Now you'll notice, it, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a little blown out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set this to sky color, which right now is just gray. And so it'll just get a gray tint on everything. But if we go ahead and set real sky and blend sky, then we can change these two, the horizon color and the amp or zenith color, uh, to a, a nice kind of sky blue right in here, and then maybe a little bit more of an orangish yellow right in here. And now, actually, I've got these two reversed, so I'm just going to hit Control C and then Control V to flip that around, and then I'll just grab my nice kind of skyish blue right in there. Maybe we'll make that a little bit more intense, something about like that, such that now when I render this, you'll notice we get a lot more kind of ambience to the environment lighting. It looks a little bit more like outdoor lighting. So we'll leave that as it is. And what I want to go ahead and do now is just before actually getting to the present, I'm, I'm kind of going backwards here than maybe, you know, you see a lot of times. But I want to go ahead and set up the environment where you know, we've got this uh, kind of dark or black black mirror here that gives us this nice kind of classy feel to it. So we're going to go ahead and set that up first, and then we'll go in and create all the presence. So on the plane here, let's go ahead and select it. And we're going to go over to the materials. We're going to add a new material. We'll just go ahead and call this ground plane. We'll pull this out just a bit. And let's just give this a solid black like that. We're going to take the specular intensity all the way down. And so right now it's effectively shadeless. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and enable a, a mirror. We'll toggle down the mirror. And let's set the mirror to, say, 0.25 ought to be just about right. Let's go ahead and render that to see what it looks like. And we can immediately see that, one, we're getting uh, all of the sky reflected, which is not what we want. Uh, so let's go ahead and change the max distance. Let's try setting it to 1, and then we're going to fade out to the material color. So we'll render that. And what this will do is then render just the present, although you'll notice that it's fa not fading out. I mean, it's fading out a little too soon. So let's go ahead and set this to probably 2.5 ought to be just about right. And there we go. So now you can see it's rendering the cube really well. But let's go ahead and turn that to, say, uh, 0.1. Got a little too much reflectivity in there. That starts to look pretty good, but you notice that it's really sharp. You know, we get this, it's not very interesting. Uh, you know, it just almost looks like this is a continuation of the cube down. So let's go ahead and turn our glossy amount down to say 0.9. And what this will do is actually blur the reflections like this, such that it adds a little bit more interest. It's kind of the same effect as a depth of field, where it allows you to take the focus away from the background, add more depth to it, but also add a lot more interest.
Uh, you can increase, you'll notice that this is kind of noisy. You can increase the smoothness of that by increasing the samples, say to 128 or something. Note that with the more samples you have, the longer it's going to take to render, but it does look a lot nicer. Uh, also, the more glossy reflections you add, the longer it will take as well. And let's, for example, let's just turn this down to say 0.1 and see what it looks like. And there you can see we just have this very kind of soft, almost glow effect to it. And definitely not what we want. Let's turn it back up to, we'll just try 0.8, see if that works well. And in fact, that actually looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and leave that. And let's just take a look at our scene again, kind of see what we have. So we have our presence in here. So we're pretty much ready to go ahead and create those. And we'll start by creating the, the box top. And this is actually going to be really easy to do. So all I'm going to do is we'll save our file. Let's go ahead and I'm just going to select everything except the cube. And then I'm going to hit M and 2 to move them to layer 2 such that we can focus on just the cube, which in fact is our present. Let's go ahead and rename that to um, present underscore box. And we'll rename our plane to ground underscore plane. On our box here, let's hit tab to go into edit mode. Uh, hit 1 to go to front view. And then I'm just going to hit shift space to maximize my view for the time being. And let's hit control R to add in a new loop cut. We'll just take this up. We can hold down control to lock to the increment. And that looks to be a pretty good depth for the lid here. And so then I'm just going to hit Z to go to wireframe mode and control left click and drag across the top there to select that. And then I'm going to hit E to extrude, which will extrude a new section off that, but leaving it right here. And then I'm immediately going to right click such that I just have a loose section sitting on top of this one. So now I can just hit S and shift Z and that will scale it out effectively creating a box top. And I'll go and turn off my, my grid view as I seem to always forget to do, even though it's distracting. There we are. So, okay, so now we have a simple box top, but let's make it look a little bit nicer. And the way that we're going to do this is by using a uh, subsurf modifier. So we'll go over here, add a modifier, subdivision surface. Let's turn the subdivisions up to two. And obviously right now you can see that it, well, it looks a little bit like an acorn, which obviously is not what we're looking for. So let's go and add in some loop cuts. Um, we'll add in a loop right up to the top, about like this, control R. And then we can actually select this loop, alt right click and hit V to rip it apart and then right click and maybe even just scale it in a little bit or scale it out just a titch such that it's just a little bit larger and that will just ensure that we have a nice seam between those two. Uh, now we can go and add in a loop down to the bottom about like that. We'll add one up to the top. And then we need to go ahead and add in and one down to here. So now it looks a little bit more like a hat box, although maybe a tall hat box. So let's make it square now by adding in two loop cuts here, control R from the top view, scroll up once and then hit S, X and move over. Then we'll do the same thing along the Y direction. And then we need to do the same thing for the bottom. So really I actually should have done that rip um, after I added in these loop cuts, but you know, no, no real harm done since this is a pretty quick step. We'll select everything. I'm going to hit W and shade smooth. And we have our very nice new box. Okay. So this is basically all we're going to do for the box, but we could go ahead and hit tilde to uh, show our scene, switch into camera view, control W and render it. And so now it starts to look a lot more interesting already. But let's go ahead and uh, first I'm going to select the box on the subsurf modifier. Let's just switch that over to optimal display. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in uh, a new, uh, we're going to add in a new cube. So let's hit shift A, add mesh cube. We're going to go ahead and move this up one increment such that it's the same position as the box. Let's hit tab to go into edit mode and hit control tab to switch to face mode. Then we're going to select these two side faces by shift right clicking on them, hit X and delete faces. And now let's go ahead and select everything and we're going to go ahead and hit S, Y and scale this down to about like that. And this is going to start creating our ribbon. So if we leave edit mode, we can also hit one to go into layer one so that we don't see the rest of this. And on this ribbon, we're going to go ahead and use a mirror modifier on this. So let's add in a loop cut 
right in the center. So it's control R, left click, and then immediately right click. And then we can go ahead and select these edit or this face, hit X, delete vertices. So now we can just add in our mirror modifier, just like that. And what I want to do to such that it's going over the box or over the lid here. And actually, let's go ahead and add in a solidify modifier as well. And you'll notice that it's going in right now. So let's set the thickness to negative point zero zero five should be about right. That way it's nice and thin. But we need to go ahead and bring it over this edge. So let's hit tab to go into edit mode, control tab, switch back to vertex mode. And we're going to grab this vertex and we're just going to pull it over along the X axis uh, about to right there. And then let's go ahead and add in a new loop cut. So we'll control R, left click, and then we're just going to slide it all the way to the top and left click again, such that now we can switch into front view or side view and hit G, Z, and pull this down to right about there, such that it lines up with the edge of this box. And actually, we've pulled this out a little too far. So I'm going to pull it in just a little bit more like that. But then we're going to go ahead and add in a so we can get a nice rounded edge on this. We need to go and add in a mirror mod or a subsurf modifier on this. So add that in. And we can actually add this in before our solidify. Well, no, actually, we'll do it after the solidify. And what I need to do then is add in another loop cut right here and another loop cut right there. And then we just want to make this basically match the, the contour of the edge of the box since it is wrapping around it after all. And then we'll shade that smooth. Uh, we need to add in another loop right down to there. And that ought to be just about right. Then let's go ahead and add a loop down to the bottom. And again, we'll take it down such that we match the basic contour. Add in another loop right over here. Slide that in. And that looks pretty good. Okay, now you'll notice that we're getting this nasty um, kind of merging over there. So let's go ahead and hit Control R, add in two loop cuts, hit S, and Y, scale it up along the Y axis, and that will give us a much nicer, softer ribbon. Let's go ahead and save everything. Now, what I want to go ahead and do before we go any further with the ribbons, um, let's actually, well, actually, one thing before we do that is we're going to select this. And we're just going to hit Alt D to create a linked copy of it such that it uses all the same modifiers, same meshes, and any changes we do to this will be reflected on the original copy or vice versa. And then we're just going to hit R to rotate Z and 90 degrees to rotate that around. So now we have a nice uh, banded ribbon, basically. So we'll go ahead and save this. And before we do anything, let's hit tilde and camera view and hit render. So this starts to look really cool. Now we can actually just ignore this right here where our faces are intersecting. Uh, that's not going to be a problem for now because that's actually going to be covered up by a bow. And so now let's go ahead and create said bow. And the way that we're going to do this is we're actually going to use, uh, use this mesh. So let's go ahead and select this. I'm going to hit Shift D, then immediately right click, hit Tab to go into edit mode. And I want to just select all of this down here and all of this right here, and we're going to hit X and delete vertices. Then we can go ahead, uh, we'll move it up just a little bit such that it's above the original ribbon, just a bit like that. And then let's go ahead and take this out uh, just a little bit further, say about twice the length, because we're going to fold it back over essentially. And the way that we're going to do this then is hit Control R, add in say mm, five loop cuts, six loop cuts or so, so that we have enough to curve it around, and then let's hit Shift S, uh, cursor to, actually, first off, we're going to select this, Shift S, cursor to selected, tab, and hit Control Alt Shift C, and hit G Origin to 3D cursor, because now we can go ahead and hit Shift A, add in a curve and a circle. On the circle, let's hit tab to go into edit mode. We're going to hit R, X, and 90 degrees to rotate this such that it's vertical. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and hit S to scale it down. And then we'll hit S and Z to just kind of flatten it out. Then I'm going to go ahead. Right now, we have a continuous loop, which we don't actually want for our mesh. And so I'm just going to hit Alt-C, which will uh, toggle 
cyclic on this such that it's no longer continuous and we can just move this over here. Now, before I do anything with this and actually make the bow shape, let's go ahead and select this and we're going to add in a new curve modifier and we can just toggle these other ones down. And this curve modifier is then going to be set to the curve circle. Now, we actually want to move the curve modifier above the mirror. Well, actually, no, we're going to delete the mirror on this because we actually don't want it. And so now we have the curve. Let's actually move it uh, to the last spot such that we get a nice smooth mesh because it'll take effect after the, the subsurf. And you can see if we increase that, it'll look, look really nice. So we can move this over. And now we can go ahead and just play with the curve. So I'm going to bring this one down here. Let's go and select all of them. You'll notice right now I can't actually rotate this. So let's select all of them. And we're going to hit V and hit Free Aligned. So now I can rotate these around any way that I want. I'll bring this one over here. And we'll bring this one back, this one back. Uh, we'll go ahead and scale this one down. We'll scale this one down. Actually, we'll scale most of these down. And so now you can see what we're able to do is start creating a very simple bow shape. Now, something that I want to warn you of. As many of you have found out uh, through various tutorials and things like that that we've done, working with curve modifiers can be a bit of a pain. It doesn't tend to work very smoothly if you change a couple things. And what that is, is if you change basically the relationship between the original location of the mesh and the curve. So you notice that when I added in or when I created the mesh, I set the, the center point right here. And then with that cursor there, I added the curve immediately such that they're in the exact same spot. And so at this point, everything works beautifully. And so in order to keep things working beautifully, I want to only change the curves location or the meshes location in edit mode. So now, you know, when I'm in, in edit mode, I can go ahead and just edit it to my heart's content and not have to worry about it. So I can just go ahead and select some of this. Maybe I'll bring this one over here. I can select one of these points. I can hit Alt S and scale it down, you know, perhaps where it's getting pinched by the actual bow. Bring this one in, pull that in a little bit. I need, need to pull this in to pull that towards the center. And you'll notice I'm also getting some tilting in here. So I can select, say, this bottom one. If I can find the point, there we go. Scale it down. Then we hit Control T and just rotate it until the tilt is correct. Something about like that. I also hit Alt S to bring that in. And then immediately, let's go and hit Tab, leave edit mode. Let's select these two. And I'm going to hit Shift D, right click, and then hit R, Z, and 180. And I'm going to do a, exactly 180 such that my mesh, if I hit Tab to go into edit mode, is still perfectly straight. Whereas if I rotated it, say, a little bit more, then my mesh would no longer be straight. Because now I can, you know, I can make it any angle that I want via editing the curve in, in edit mode. So I just want to be sure that I'm never distorting my original mesh. You can see this one needs to be be tilted. So again, that's just control T. And now what I can go ahead and do is now that I have these, let's first just select both of them. Uh, or actually, I'm going to take this one, I'm going to select all my points, and I'm just going to rotate it around like this, such that it's opposite of my bands. And maybe I'll actually hit Alt S to scale them up just a little bit. Then I'll go ahead and select this curve over here, do the same thing, Alt S, just so they match the overall size of the ribbons a little better. And I'll rotate this one around something like that. And so that starts to create my bow nicely. And now with the cursor still there, I'm just going to hit Shift A, add in a mesh and circle on the circle. I'm going to hit F6, take it down to say, how about uh, 12 vertices. We'll go ahead and align it to view. And we'll set the size to 0.1 about right and then if I hit tab to go into edit mode I'll select it I'll scale down along the z-axis something about like that uh, and then maybe I'll go ahead and move this down towards the cursor so I'll just deselect this bring that down just so it kind of flattens out as if it's sitting along the box and I'm gonna select everything and we're just going to move it out along the y-axis a little bit then I'll hit E to extrude take it back in further and then I can go ahead and select everything 
and I'm gonna hit tab to leave edit mode and then I'm actually gonna go ahead and rotate this around to fit in object mode such that when I'm in edit mode I can now hit S and then double tap X Y or Z to scale along those local axes without having distorted it so if I want to just go along the x-axis I can extend that about like that and then what I'll do is I'm going to go and select my curve. I'm going to select these two points and hit Alt S, bring them in about like that. Then I'll do the same thing over here. Bring them in to fit. Maybe I'll tilt that one just slightly. I'm going to go and select this. I'm going to add in a subsurf modifier, set that to 2, optimal display. Tab to go into edit mode, select everything, W and shade smooth, then control N to fix these black areas. I'm going to rotate this a little bit and hit Alt S to scale it up just a little bit. And I'm also going to add in a new solidify modifier to this. And the thickness needs to be the same as the original curve. So let's set this down to, I think it was 0 0.005 should be right. And then we can go ahead and scale this down along the Z axis. Actually, about like that should be about right. I'm just going to scale this along the local X. So I hit S and XX. And then what I'll do is now I'm going to add in a little bit of bulge to this. So I'll select these. I'm going to hit S and double tap uh, Z to move them along. And then I'm going to hit Alt S to bulge it just a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to select each of my ribbon or my bows. And I'm going to go ahead. First, actually, let's go ahead and select our curves, and let's maybe just bring this down about like that. We'll bring this one down, do the same thing over here. You can see that that needs to be tilted so that it's not going into the, into the box. Just scaling those a little down a little bit with Alt-S. And then what I want to do, actually right now, these are far too small. And so I'm going to select this. Well, actually, no, I'm going to scale up. Uh, we're going to, yeah, let's first go ahead and select this point here. And we'll go ahead and add in a new edge loop right about there. We're going to scale it down just a little. And then we'll scale this one in quite a bit. And as soon as you hit tab to leave edit mode, you'll notice that applies to those ones as well. And then in order to make this not just seem like the ribbon is changing size, we're going to go ahead and select it. Let's add in a couple or say five edge loops down it such that I can then go hit control tab to go into edge mode. I'm going to select this edge, this edge, and this edge, every other one, hit G and Z, bring it up along the Z axis. I can hit one to go into front view and maybe rotate that down a little bit such that it looks like the ribbon is actually getting bunched up. I'll go ahead and select this and this and this and this, select all these, deselect that, and I'll just go ahead and scale these up just a little bit so it looks a little bit more fitting. And those still, those seem to be a little bit large, so I'm just going to hit tab to go on edit mode, select everything, hit period, and then scale down towards the cursor just a little bit. We'll do the same thing with this one. Okay, that looks good. And then let's go ahead and select this and I'm going to click apply on the curve modifier. And actually we wanna undo that. Let's move this above the subsurf, er, nope, sorry. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, yeah, we'll just click apply. It's okay if it changes. A little bit we can adjust that you could fit, make it apply exactly by applying the subsurf first but I don't really want to do that so now we can go ahead and delete our curves and we'll select this and now I'll just say bring this one down this one down scale along the z-axis bring these down maybe do a little bit over here select that one scale along the z-axis pull it up along the z just a little bit Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and add in, again, like six edge loops or so. Hit control tab, switch into edge mode, and then I'm just going to select each of these edges. Switch into front view, and then just rotate around a little bit by hitting, hitting six, and maybe rotate around a little bit more, 
and then I'll just hit comma to rotate around the individual center, rotate this around just a little bit, about like that, so we create that pinching effect real easily. I'm going to go into vertex mode, hit O to turn on my proportional editing, and I'm just going to pull this down just a little bit to show that it's not intersecting. And then let's just go ahead and duplicate this over to the other side. Oops, I need one more loop in there. There we go. So in edge mode, I'll grab these three. And again, that's just control tab to switch into edge mode. Turn off proportional editing for the time being. Rotate this around, pull it up just a little bit. And there we go. We also really ought to grab, say, these ones down here. Pull them up. We'll do the same thing with this one over here. Except I'm first going to just select all these and all those. I hit H to hide them. So now I can select these much easier. And then I'll just pull them up. Okay. And let's go ahead. I'm going to add in just a few more loops in here. Such that then I can just kind of add in some subtle variety by just scaling these. There we go. That'll just add in a little extra variety. I can go ahead and rotate them around just a little bit. So I'm just rotating around the Z axis. There we go. That helps a lot. Okay, let's go ahead and just render this to see what it looks like. And that's looking pretty good, although it doesn't look like the it's actually pinching the bow just yet. So let's select this. Tab to go into edit mode. Select all this, and we're just going to scale it down just a bit, and then maybe hit S and double tap uh, Z, scale it up, put it in vertex mode, and we're just going to pull these over. Or actually, let's select these. I'm going to add in another edge loop right down to here, and then we'll scale that loop in a little bit. Then I can rotate it around, do the same thing over here, hit Alt H to unhide, add in that loop. Scale it down, and so then I'll add in a second loop again, pull it out, and that way it looks much more like it's actually pinching. I can tweak, tweak these a little bit by pulling them down with the proportional editing. Turn proportional off, grab this loop, pull it up. Just tweaking that just a little bit. Go ahead and bring that along the y-axis there. And now it looks much more natural. Okay, on the ribbons here then, I'm going to go ahead, hit control tab, switch into face mode. I'm going to select, say, uh, these two faces. Then I'm just going to hit control plus to select uh, more. And then I'm just going to turn on my proportional editing again and hit Alt S and just scale these down just a little bit with a pretty small influence to get me a nice kind of bow in the ribbon. I'll do that again. Now I can go ahead, take these down just a bit more. There we go. That works really well. So again, that's just Control Plus and then Alt S, scale that down. Then I'll go ahead and grab just these two, hit Alt S, and bring them down, and that'll give me a much more natural ribbon shape to it. Then I'll render that. And that looks pretty good, although I think I'm going to go ahead and wrote, grab my ribbon, and I'm just going to rotate it around a little bit such that it looks a little bit more natural, maybe scale it up just a little bit, so that it actually looks like it's kind of grabbing a bit more of this. In fact, I could go into edit mode, switch into vertex mode, grab my one loop here, and then just go ahead and pull this around a little bit like that. I can add in, say, one more loop there, kind of pull this back, maybe pull this back a little bit, just such that it's not completely straight and natural, just adding that little bit of twist to it will make it feel a lot more realistic. Okay, and then actually I'm going to go ahead and once again I'll scale that down and I'll scale this down. That way it's not intersecting right where it meets. 
and okay. That's starting to look pretty good. Uh, maybe I'll go ahead and add in a little bit more volume to the, I guess you could say the knot here, but we'll just select that, scale it up. And we're going to go ahead and scale these ones down just a little bit more. We'll go ahead and scale this down such that it evens out. Render that. I was just noticing that it, you could tell that it was kind of intersecting right in here. So now that looks a bit more natural. Okay, so let's go ahead now. Um, I want to create the, the present tag, and then we'll get on to the materials. So for the tag, well, we're going to one, select all these, and set optimal display for these. There we are. And for this one. Okay, let's go and hit Shift A, add in a mesh and a plane on this plane. Then we'll just go ahead and move it up to where we can see it. Hit Tab to go into edit mode. And I'm just going to um, select this edge. I'm going to take it up uh, pretty much like half a, half a blend unit or so. Then I'm going to hit E to extrude, take it up some more. Maybe take this one back one. Then I'm going to scale this down. So I create a nice kind of tag shape. And then we're just going to add in uh, a subsurf modifier to this. And in order to make it nice and square again, or actually, uh, let's just add in a simple subdivision subsurf modifier. So now hit W and Shade Smooth. And the reason that we're adding in the simple one, which we'll set to level 2, is so that we can actually add in some basic warp to this. And we'll actually do that with a lattice here in a second. But first, let's go ahead and create the rest of the mesh. So I'm going to hit Control R, add in two edge loops, because I want to go ahead and create a kind of a, a rivet here. And first, let's just Alt-Right click, select one edge loop. We'll hit S, X, and 0. And then we'll do the same thing over here, such that we create... Uh, actually, this might even be a perfect square. If we go down, hit N to bring up the mesh display and show edge length. In fact, it is a perfect square. Convenient. Okay, so let's just hit E to extrude, right click, and S to scale that down. And then we'll go ahead and hit X and delete faces. Let's go and add in a solidify modifier, which we'll add in to be pretty shallow. So we'll do 0 0.005, so the same as the ribbons, actually. And then let's add in some creasing here. Or I guess that's not actually going to do anything unless this is above the subsurf modifier. I guess not even then, actually. Okay. Oh, that's because it's a simple subsurf. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do the Catmull Clark again. And we're just going to then select all of these exterior edges like that. We're going to hit E to extrude, right click, uh, and then just S to scale and scale out just a little bit. And then let's go ahead and add in an edge loop right there. Bring that up. And an edge loop right down here. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and actually, okay, we're going to go back just a little bit. We don't need that extra edge. Instead, we're going to extrude this right here. And then we'll select these. We're going to scale them in, add an edge loop right there, an edge loop right there, and one more along the bottom right there. Okay. Oh, and one right there. So now we've got our nice shape to it uh, with the subtle rounded edges. It will actually help a lot. Let's go ahead and select this right here. We're going to hit Shift-D, right-click, uh, scale down. And then we're going to hit P to separate by selection. Then we'll select it. And let's go ahead and delete the solidify modifier off of it. We'll pull this out along the Z-axis just a little bit. And then we're going to hit E to extrude, take it in along the Z-axis to the other side. And that will create our very subtle rivet. We're going to go ahead and take that. Now eh, we can go ahead and leave it at level 2. It'll be fine. Okay. We'll save this. And let's go ahead and apply our... Well, no, we won't, won't worry about that just yet. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do... Let's go ahead and select this. And we'll hit Shift A, add in a lattice. And on this lattice, then let's go ahead and actually, whoops, delete. We're going to select this, Shift S, cursor to selected. Then we'll hit Shift A, add in a lattice. 
Let's go ahead and scale it along the x-axis and the y-axis to go ahead and, and move it a little bit if need be to fit the plane exactly. Let's also go ahead and scale it down. Actually, we don't need to scale it down just yet. Let's go over to the to the lattice settings. Let's set the U, uh, the U to 3, the V to 4, and the W to 1. And then we can select this, and we'll add in a lattice modifier. And we'll add this to the lattice. We'll go ahead and do the same thing right here. So now if I select the lattice, then I can move this around any way that I please. And so on the lattice, let's go ahead and just, oh, that won't work. Let's go and select all three items. We're going to hit S to scale it down, get about the right size, and then we're going to move it over. We'll rotate, uh, say, 90 degrees around the Z axis, pull it over here, and just kind of get it positioned approximately where we want it, about like that. Then we can select our lattice, and we'll just go in, add some subtle curve to it, Maybe pull the edges up just a tad, or out just a tad, and that'll just add in just another layer or a bit of dimension to our our tag. Something about like that will be good. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add in another curve. So we're going to add curve, and we'll do a bezier this time. Let's hit tab to go into edit mode. Let's select everything. We're going to scale it way down. Bring this out. We're going to set this curve, rotate it around about there. Bring this one out. Extrude it again. And what this is going to do, this is going to create the, the wire of our plane. I'm going to move this down to about the top of the box, about like that. On here then, let's go ahead and extrude this down. Let's scale these handles way down. Let's also go ahead and turn off the handle normals by hitting in. Bring this over. And then we want to bring this out to about there. We're going to extrude it down. Then we'll rotate it around as it's going through the rivet. And then we're going to go ahead and extrude, bring it up again to about right there. And then we'll actually go ahead and rotate or go around the original cable once or so. And so now, before we go any further, so that we can actually see what this looks like, let's go ahead and hit Shift S and cursor to selected. And then we'll hit Shift A and add in a new. Uh, actually, we ought to do Shift-C, but we'll just set this at the origin. It doesn't actually matter where it's at. We'll just hit Shift-A, add in a Bezier circle, hit Tab, and let's just scale this down to 0 0.01, so it's very, very tiny. And actually, we're going to go even further than that, so 0 0.025 now on top of that one. And then on this right here, our path, or our tag wire, which we should go ahead and name this, uh, tag underscore wire, we're going to add in... Uh, underneath the curve options, add in the bevel object to be the curved circle. And so now that creates a wire, and that looks pretty good. We can go ahead and say, let's select this, bring it down a little bit, bring it around. We can go and extrude one more time, and just bring it up here, bring that up. And just go in like that, and you'll never know. You'll just know that it's wrapped up just like so. And bring this around, look a little bit more natural. Perfect, about like that. Save it. And if we now render this, that looks pretty sweet. But right now, our present is kind of boring just because it's gray. So let's go ahead and add in our materials. First, we'll go ahead and texture the tag. On the tag, I'm just going to select it and hit Tab to go into edit mode. And what I want to do, to, in order to unwrap this evenly, let's just bring this over. Let's switch this over to a UV image editor. And on the render result here, we'll just hit X so that we can see the UV display. If we hit U and project, or U and unwrap, you notice that this is going to be distorted. Well, we want this to be perfectly even and nice. So the way that we're going to do this is we want to use the U and project from view. However, You'll notice that this is not perfectly flat. And so again, it's going to be distorted. So instead, let's go to View, and Align View, Align View to Selected, and Top. And so now it's going to be perfectly aligned to make this perfectly flat. And if we hit U and Project from View, we now have a perfect representation of this exactly in 2D space like we created it. 
So now I can go ahead and I'm just going to hit image, open an image, and I've got our CG Cookie logo right here with an alpha channel. I'll just load that in. Let's hit uh, texture solid here so we can actually see what it looks like. And then we'll just go ahead and scale this up uh, something about like that should be good. We don't need to worry about the the tiling because we're going to fix that in just a moment. So now we can go ahead and merge these. Uh, we can control W, save it. Let's go over to the material and we're going to add a new material and we'll call this tag. Let's go ahead and give this a, a solid white. We're going to turn the specular shading down quite a bit. We'll decrease the hardness a bit. Let's go ahead and give it a slight mirror trend or no, we don't need to do mirror on this. You're not actually really going to notice it. Instead, let's go over, add in a texture. Apologies for the my brother's phone, but we're going to add in the an image texture now. And on this image, then we're just going to go down. We can click this to pull up our logo right there. We're going to go ahead and pre-multiply the logo so that we don't see any uh, nasty white borders. On the mapping, let's set it to UV. We'll turn down the mapping channel. And underneath the image mapping down here at the bottom, we need to change the extension to clip. That way it'll only it, it won't tile the image and it will just exti or it'll just cut it off right there at the end. Uh, and then we should be able to just go ahead and render that and be good to go. Uh, yes, looks pretty good. It's maybe a little bit blurry. Um, not actually sure why that is, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so that'll be good. We could go ahead and We'll just give it a slight specularity. It's maybe got a little too, too little right now. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, now let's go ahead and texture the rest. Let's go and grab the rivet and we'll add a new material. Oops, no fake user. And I'll call tag underscore rivet. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna give this a, a dark gray color along with a dark gray specular. Or actually just a subtle blue specular will make it a little bit more metal-like. Uh, we'll go ahead and increase the hardness and the intensity about like that. And that should be good. Uh, you know, you're barely going to see it, so it's not really going to matter. Let's go ahead and give it a new uh, wire. So we'll call this uh, tag underscore wire. We're going to do very similar to what we did for the rivet, but we're going to make this a dark green, you know, kind of that Christmas dark green that you generally most of your wires are colored. Something about like that will be good. Let's give our our specular, kind of a dark yellowish green. We'll make it much more like metal. Increase the intensity, de increase the hardness a bit, and that'll be good. Okay, let's just render this, see where we're at. And looking pretty good just like that. Let's go ahead and grab the, the box. On the box, we're gonna give this a very, very subtle blue. So it's just basically kind of an off-white blue. Uh, and then we're going to increase the brightness all the way up to one. Let's take the specular color. Again, we'll give it a subtle blue to make it a bit softer. We'll take down the intensity quite a bit. And let's also add in a ramp to this. And we're gonna use the default, although we're gonna slide this over just a bit. Let's set this ramp to energy, or actually no, to normal. And then we're gonna set it to add. So it'll just kind of lighten that up. And if we render that, uh, you won't see a lot of difference, but it'll just be some subtle coloring difference where the uh, where the light is hitting it. Okay, uh, that's all we're gonna do for the box. Although actually on the box, let's give it a subtle mirror since you know generally uh, Christmas boxes tend to be slightly reflective. We'll set this to say 0.05, uh, just very very subtle, and then let's take the glossy down to say 0.7 as well. So we're not going to see a lot, but we'll have just subtle reflections in here. Uh, you can see just a little bit in there, which will really help uh, add to the depth of the image. And maybe we could even increase the reflections to say uh, 0.1. And since we've got a high gloss, you're still not going to see a lot of reflections. You'll see more of just, you know, almost like indirect lighting onto it. And that looks pretty good. Okay, now we're, we're going to see where it really comes together with the ribbon. So on the ribbon, we're going to, oh, and let me name the box material as box. The ribbon, add a new material called ribbon of all things. And we're going to give this a nice red material, maybe a little bit darker. Uh, something about like that. 
Then we're going to change the specular color also to a nice, um, slightly more pinkish red, something about like that. And we want kind of a metallic ribbon. Let's go and select all of our other ribbons here. And then we'll select the last one that has a material. We'll hit Control L and assign materials. And let's just render this to see what it looks like. And, you know, it looks it looks all right, but it's nothing, nothing special. And so what we want to do now is go over to the, the world settings. Or actually, no, first we want to add in a mirror. I'm going to set the mirror to about 0.1. And again, we'll do a gloss of, say, point, uh, 0.9. And then we're going to go over to the world settings. We're going to then, after switching to the world, we're going to add in a new texture. So we'll click New and go to Clouds and choose Image. On this image, this is not actually included in the source files, uh, but what it is, I'm just going to add in a HDRI probe as basically a world texture. Uh, you can get these from, if I can find them, here we go. You can get these from pretty much all over. Many of them are free to download and free for personal use, but we can't redistribute them because of the license. But I'm just going to grab this one here. Uh, and again, you can find this, if you just search Google for HDRI probe free, you'll find lots of them. You can also buy them from 3docean.net. Uh, and then, so underneath the mapping, we're going to set the view to ang map. If we set both, we can kind of see what it'll look like. Although right now we need to go ahead and toggle this down, toggle this down and set the influence to the horizon and the zenith and zenith down. So we can actually see it. And let's set this to uh, multiply. So what multiply will do will just kind of take out some of the highlights so it's not too intense. And now if we render this, we should see we start getting these really nice uh, reflections on the ribbon from basically the highlights in here. And so this is cool, but it's not quite what we want because we don't want these white highlights. We want something a little bit more metallic. And so they should actually be uh, more red. And the way that we'll do that is go down here and underneath the reflection material, let's just hit Control C over this and Control V to paste that in. And then maybe we'll just make it a little more uh, pinkish and a little brighter. And then we can render this and we should see some really nice bright red highlights over the rest of our ribbon. And that starts to look pretty good, although it's definitely a little a little too pink. So let's go ahead and take this. We're going to give it more of a bright red. We'll take this up and let's just make this one a little bit darker. There we go. That should actually balance it out nicely. We'll also make this something a little more like that. And then we can render that. And that starts to look pretty good. Uh, not great. So let's maybe, let's see. Let's go ahead and increase the mirror. Let's go ahead and put it up to say 0.2. Should bring in a few more reflections. Uh, and then we're also going to go ahead and enable a ramp on this. Or again, we're going to set it to normal and to add. So it'll just brighten that up. And let's pull this in just a little bit. Let's set this over to B spline. And actually, we're going to set the box one over to B spline as well. So we get a much softer highlight in there. Now you can see we're seeing some little more variation in the ribbon uh, along the side there. And then we're starting to get these nice highlights on the ribbon right in there. And that's maybe a little bit too much. Uh, let's go ahead and on the ribbon here, if we can find it. We'll just select it here. Let's go ahead and take this down a bit. We'll make it a little bit more reddish. Or actually, well, no, we'll leave it at the white. But then we're going to take uh, the factor down about like that. And then render that. Okay, and this still isn't quite what I want. So let's adjust this a little bit. Let's change the specular uh, back to a nice white. We're going to set the ramp to more of a red. And then we'll do, uh, we'll set this up just a little bit, increase here. There we are. And then let's go ahead and yeah, we'll just leave it like that. 
And there we go. Now you can see that we're getting these nice reflections. And so the last thing that I want to do is we're just going to um, grab this. We're going to select the entire present. We're going to hit Shift C to uh, reset the cursor. We're going to hit period to scale around the cursor. Hit Shift D to and then right click and scale to scale it down to create a smaller version. And then we can move it over, hit comma, rotate this around, grab our, com our camera view. We'll maybe scale it up just a little bit more, kind of rotate around, pull it back, move it over, just kind of get something that looks pretty good, maybe something about like that. Then we're going to go ahead, we'll grab our camera, and let's just move it in a bit. We'll rotate just slightly, get something that's a little bit more dynamic, about like that. Okay, and then I'll just render the final result and then let you see how it looks. And here we go, here we can see our final results. So we've got these nice, very soft, glossy reflections. We've got the highlights on the ribbon, making it nice, look nice and metallic, uh, stretching over the boxes, then the pinching in the ribbon to make it look a little bit more realistic without ever actually having to uh, try and model an actual knot. And so there we are. I uh, hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time.